The last couple of units in this course are going to deal with data and statistics. So in 13.1, the I can statement, so our objective for this unit, is to be able to compute basic descriptive statistics. So here's how we spell the word statistics and make data displays. So we're going to be making some displays uh, once we've got these descriptive statistics figured out. So the warm-up is something that you've probably heard of before. All of these words you probably learned for the last couple of years. They've been thrown around. Hopefully you remember what they are. So we're talking mean, median, and mode. So let's talk about the mean. Mean is the arithmetic average. It's what we typically think of when we say average. So it's this one right here. That would be B. And then the median, the median is the middle score in a data set. So that's going to be this one right here. It's going to be C. And then the mode is the one that occurs the most often. So that one is going to be A right there, OK? Now, statistics is the science of making decisions using data, using numbers. And statistics provides an organized set of rules that we can use to make good decisions and make convincing arguments. So we'll write the word arguments here. So this means you can be convincing with the data that you have. So two of the most important questions that we need to answer about data is what is the center and what is the spread? So when we're talking about what is the center, this helps us understand what a typical piece of data looks like. The center helps us know what happens in the data set on average. So we'll write on average right here. And the spread does something different. It's, it helps us understand how much variability there is. So we're going to write the word variability, how much variability there is in the data set. So this means, are, are the pieces of data, are they close together, or do they vary widely? Are they really spread out? So descriptive statistics are numbers that help us understand the center and the spread of the data. And as a review, you've already learned some of these. We've got some basic statistics that to help us describe the center of the data. So we've mentioned these up above. We talked about mean, median, and mode. But let's just review and make sure everybody understands how to find those. So when we say the mean, what we're talking about is the arithmetic average. What we do is we add up the numbers, and then we divide by n. Let's make sure we all talk about what n is and we understand that. So for mean and median, and we need to know what n is. So n represents the number, so let's write number right here, the number of data points. In other words, how many pieces are we adding up? So if we have to find the mean of eight scores, we're going to add those up and then we're going to divide by eight. If we've got 52 scores, we're going to add up 52 scores and we're going to divide by 52. So the median, what we do there is we put the numbers in orders from smallest to biggest, and then we find the middle. So we find the middle here, all right? And then for the mode, we find the number that occurs most often, most often. And the word mode kind of sounds like most. Now, there are some other basic descriptive statistics that describe the spread of the data, and they look like this. So let's talk about the minimum, and we're going to uh, just uh, abbreviate that or shorten that as min. This is the smallest number in the data set. Okay, So the minimum is the smallest number in the data set. And then quartile one, we're going to call this Q1. It's the top of the bottom one fourth of the data set. All right. Quartile Q, which we're going to call Q2, is the top of the bottom two fourths of the data set. And if it's the top of the bottom two fourths, two fourths is the same as one half. So that would be right in the middle. That would be like the middle 50% or so. So we also call this the median. It's just another way to talk about the median. So if somebody says quartile two, they're talking about the median. If somebody says median, then they're talking about quartile two. And then Q3, Q3, quartile three, you can probably guess. This is the top of the bottom three-fourths of the data set. And of course, the maximum, we're going to abbreviate that as max, it is the biggest the biggest number in the data set. Now, these descriptive statistics are called the five number summary. For obvious reasons, we've got these five numbers here. And we can actually visualize these pretty easily. So we'll mark this one down on this end as the min. This will be the smallest one. The one on the other end, this top end, this will be the max. And then we should be pretty good at eyeballing this. So make a little mark right in the middle. And the one in the middle, that's going to be the median, or we can also call that Q2. So Q2, it's the top of the bottom two-fourths of the data. So this is two-fourths of the data down here and two-fourths of the data up here. So that would be half the data down here and half the data down here. Now, in order to find Q1, we basically just make a mark right in the middle there. So we'll call that Q1. That's quartile one. All right, let me make that look nice. And then up here, this would be quartile three. So this is the top of the bottom one-fourth of the data. 
This is the top of the bottom two-fourths of the data. This is the top of the bottom three-fourths of the data. And then this right here, that's the max, so all of the data is that or smaller. Now, there are some steps for finding a five-number summary, and here's, here's how they go. So the first thing we want to do is we want to arrange the data in ascending order. So we're going to write the word ascending here. So ascending means we write it from smallest to biggest. Then we determine the min and the max. So the min and the max. And these are pretty easy because the min, again, is just the smallest one. The max is the biggest one. And then we determine the blank. And it says IEQ2. So remember, Q2 is the same as the median. So we find the median. We find the middle one. And then we determine Q1 and Q3 finally. Now, these can be a little bit tough. So Q, Q1 is the median of the bottom half of the data. So basically what we do, once we figure out how to find a median, we're gonna find the median of the bottom half. We're gonna find the middle of the bottom half, and that's gonna be Q1. And Q3 is gonna be, be the median of the top half of the data. Okay, so this would be the top half, and we'd find the middle point right there. That would be Q3. So let's come down here and let's talk about a couple of other descriptive statistics that can show the variability, or in other words, the spread of the data. So I'm hoping you've heard of both of these before. The first one is the range. The range is the difference. So let's write the word difference. So that means we're gonna be doing a subtraction problem. It's the difference between the maximum and the minimum. So in order to find the range, we take the max and we subtract the min. Now the IQR, which is the interquartile range, which we're always just gonna say IQR. We just kinda of get used to that because interquartile range, that's kind of a mouthful. What that is, is that is the range of the middle 50% of the data. Well, the middle 50% of the data is from Q1 up to Q3. So remember, each one of these, they're called quartiles because they're each a quarter of the data. So the middle 50%, so what we wanna know is how much variability, how much spread is there in that middle 50% of the data? So basically what we do is we say, hey, let's figure out the range from Q3 down to Q1. So we're gonna do Q3 minus Q1. That'll tell us what the IQR is. Now, in general, the more spread out the data is, the bigger the range is, and the more variability the data set has. So let's write variability, variability, okay? So when we're talking about spread out, a really large spread means we're gonna have a lot of variability. If it's not very spread out, then there's not gonna be much variability. Okay, let's take a look at the other side. So here on example one, we've got some data about the number of tech decks that were sold. Um, and let's see what's nice about this data. If you take a look at this, gosh, it starts at two and then just goes up all the way up to 12. So the first thing that we notice is that it's in order. So in order, and we probably should be a little bit more specific. It's in ascending order. Okay, it goes from the smallest one to the biggest one. Now we also need to know what N is. We need to know how many pieces there are in the data set. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine pieces in the data set. Now, uh, N can be useful for a couple of things. We need to know it definitely for the mean, and we've got to know it for the median. So let's find the mean first. That's the arithmetic average. So what I've done here is I have plugged in those numbers, so I've got the two, the four, the five, the eight, the eight, and so forth. And I'm just gonna go to the end of the screen. So we've got 12 in there and I'm gonna hit enter. So we add those up, we end up with 69. The mean is the average. So we add those up and then we divide by how many there are. So we're gonna take that answer. So I'm just gonna hit divide. It's gonna take 69 and we're gonna divide by nine and we get 7.6 repeated. So I'm gonna write that down as 7.67. So 7.67 here. All right, so we have 7.67 there, and then we're gonna find the median. Now here's where it can be helpful to know what N is in finding the median. We're gonna use this little formula right here, and this one uh, in particular is gonna turn out pretty nice. So this says N plus one divided by two can be used to find the median. So right, median right here. And here's how this works. We're gonna take nine, and we're gonna add one to it, and then we're gonna divide by two. So this is 10 divided by two, so we end up with five. So I'm just gonna put a TH on that. And what that means is, if we've got these in order, the median is gonna be the fifth one. Now, it doesn't always work out to be a nice one, but check this out. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. This one right here is the median. Now we can kind of verify that visually. Sometimes you may have been taught that you can kind of say, I'm gonna cross this one off and this one off and this one off and this one off and just kind of walk my way into the middle. And when we've crossed off four on this side and four on this side, then we know that we've got to the median of eight. 
Now, that works just fine for a small data set, but if you've got a data set that's got like 50 or 60 in there, you really don't want to be crossing them off. You just want to use this formula to figure out which one it is. So that's the fifth one. So the median is going to be 8. And then the mode, which one happens the most often? Well, 12 happens twice, but 8 happens three times. So we're going to say the mode is 8. And then the minimum, the minimum is the smallest one, so that's going to be a 2. The maximum, that's going to be the biggest one, that's going to be a 12. We know what Q2 is, that's the same as the median, so we're going to write an 8 right here. And here's how we find Q1 and Q3. Here's how we find the quartiles. So what I'm basically going to do is say, look, we are not going to uh, use these pieces at all. This is the bottom 50% of the data, and we've got four pieces of data. So um, if I wanted to, I could go through and I could do this. I cross them off. That means the middle is going to be right in between there. Now, I'm going to use this formula again and show you how this would work. I need to find the middle of four pieces of data. So I'm going to do 4 plus 1 divided by 2. That's 5 divided by 2, and I get 2.5. Okay? That means it's going to be the 2.5th one. So that's going to be in between, right in between the second one. Whoops, let me write, write it this way. The second and the third one. Okay? So right in between first one, second one, third one, right in between there. So here's how we find that. We find the average of the two of those. So if a median or a quartile falls in between two pieces of data, we add those together and we divide by two. So Q1 is going to be 4 plus 5 divided by 2. That's 9 divided by 2, so we end up with 4.5. 4.5 here. Now, what I want to point out is this number, this descriptive statistic here, is not one of the data points, and that's totally okay. If it happens to be that Q1 falls in between those or the median falls in between some other ones, that's totally okay. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to cross off the bottom half of the data, including the median, and we want to find the middle of the top half. Um, it's going to be right here, right in between 10 and 12. So again, we'd add these together. So we're going to do 10 plus 12 divided by 2. That's 22 divided by 2, so we end up with 11. Now, if you can kind of eyeball that and do it that way, that's totally okay. But we've got the median right here. We've got Q1 right here. We've got Q3 right here. And that one is the min, and that one is the max. Now, we do need to find the range. The range is the difference from the max to the min. So this is going to be 12 minus 2. So we end up with 10. And the IQR is the difference between Q3 minus Q1. So this is going to be 11 minus 4.5. And 11 minus 4.5 is 6.5. So we've got all of these nice descriptive statistics about this particular data set. It's also a good idea to be able to display data. So let's talk about a dot plot. A dot plot is exactly what you'd think it is. So if we take a look at this one right here, in this particular data set, they put two dots above the one. That means there were two ones in the data set, only one, two, three threes, two fours, and then one, two, three, four, five, six fives, and then uh, two sixes. So that's what the display would look like. And you could find the mean, median, and mode, and stuff like that. You could actually write down all of the pieces of data. But that's what a dot plot looks like. A histogram looks like this. Um, it's a bunch of rectangles. And we've broken this up into, it looks like these would be five. So this would be from 15 to 20, from 20 to 25, from 25 to 30, and so forth. And then up this side right here, we've got a vertical axis. So the fact that this rectangle goes to about right here, and this is 5 and 10 and 15, that means there's probably about eight scores that are in between 15 and 20. If we take a look at the tallest one, that's in from 40 to 45. So in that range or that class or that bin, there's lots of different ways that we can talk about it, that interval. So if we come over here and slide right over there, it looks like there were probably 35 pieces of data in this little interval from 40 to 45. And then here's another one. This is called a box plot. Sometimes you'll hear it called a box and whisker plot. So on this one, uh, you've probably seen these before. Uh, this uses the five number summary in order to make this. So this is the minimum. This is the maximum. And then each one of these vertical lines divides it into a quarter of data. So this is the bottom 25%. This is the next 25%, the second 25%, this is the third 25%, and this is the last 25%. So you can kind of look at it, and you can see how tightly packed each one of those quartiles were. Now, the next one says we want to make a dot plot, a histogram, a box plot for that data set that we had up above. 
So here's what we do on this one. Um, we're just going to take each one of these, and for a dot plot, we're going to represent each one of those with a dot, or sometimes I like to use an X. So I'm going to put an X above the 2. Then we've got a 4, so I'll put an X right there. And the fact that we skipped over the 3 means there are no 3s in our data set. Then we've got a 5 right next door to that. Then we've got three eights, so I'm going to stack those on top of each other. And then we've got a 10, and we've got two 12s. So that's what a dot plot would look like. And now we're going to make a histogram. Now, in order to make a histogram, we probably ought to add something to this, and that's a vertical axis over here. Now, I don't have any zeros on here, so I'm just going to make an axis that goes up like this. And I'm going to put a mark about here, 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 and here. So this would be 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I've got a vertical axis. And I'm going to make each one of these rectangles here. I'm going to make it represent uh, how many there are in that particular class or that particular interval. So over the 2, I'm going to go like this. Right on top of the 2, I'm going to make a box that goes right there. So it goes from 1 and a half to 2 and a half. So it's one unit wide. There's one value in there, and it's one unit tall. It goes up to that part on the vertical axis here. Then we've got a 4. So I'm going to draw a little box right here. Again, the fact that there's no rectangle here over the 3 means there was no 3 or nothing near the 3 in our data set. We've got a 5. So that's going to go right here. Then we've got three eights, so those three eights need to go up that far, over, and then down, and that comes up to this uh, unit of three on the vertical axis. We've got a 10, like this, and then we've got a 12. We actually have two 12s, so I'm going to make it go like this. Now, I chose to center each one of these over uh, the integer value. You could slide this over, and you could go from 2 to 3, or just below 3, so like 2.99. Um, and things like that. But this is a decent way to do that one. It kind of matches up with what we've got with the, uh, the dot plot over here. And then we want to make a box plot. So here's how we make a box plot. So to make a box plot, we're going to draw vertical lines above Q1, Q2, and Q3. So that's Q1, the median, and Q3. So I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit so we can see what that data was from up above. So there's the data that we need. So Q1 is at 4.5. So I'm going to go to 4.5. That's about right here. And I just draw a little vertical line about like that. Then I'm going to make one above Q2 or above the median. So that's going to be 8. So right above 8, I'm going to make a vertical line about the same length. And then Q3 is 11. So I'm going to go right to 11. And we're going to make a line like that. Okay, And then we enclose those in a box. So I'm just going to draw a horizontal line right there and a horizontal line right there. This is the middle 50% of the data, OK? Now we're going to draw vertical lines above the min and the max. So the min is 2. So I'm going to draw a little line. And normally, we make these a little bit smaller. But if you want to make it as tall as these other vertical lines, that's totally OK. And then let's see. Uh, then we make one at the max. And the max, remember, was 12. So 12 is right here. And then we draw a little horizontal line from Q1 to the min. So Q1 down to the min looks like this. And from Q3 to the max, so that goes like this. So what you can see from that is take a look at this first quarter, this first 25% of the data. It's about as spread out as this third quartile, is that uh, next, uh, sorry, that like from 50 to 75% of the data. And this one's really spread out. That second quarter is really spread out. And that last quarter really tightly packed together. OK? Now, we're going to come down here and take a look at the end of this. And it's got a little thought experiment. It says, what's the difference between a bar graph and a histogram? Well, there is a huge difference between a bar graph and a histogram. And, and here are some of them. So um, when we deal with a bar graph, the size of the rectangles, how wide they are, doesn't make any difference. And the gaps in between don't make any difference. So right here, when we go from 60 to 65, that means our little interval for that class or that bin or whatever you want to call it, that's from 60 to 65. And if there's space in between, unlike over here on the bar graph, that space doesn't mean anything. But this space does. This means that there were no pieces of data between 70 and 75. So this is a bar graph. A lot of time we use that for um, categorical data. And here we use this for numeric data over here. So like we've got test scores there. So lots of good information in both of these, but that's the difference between a bar graph and a histogram. Now remember, on a bar graph, the width of the rectangles and the gaps between them and the order makes no difference. It doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Um, whereas if we, we switch rectangles with the two of these, that would mean something completely different. But if we moved English and French, that wouldn't make any difference at all, OK? Now, what I'd like you to do is fill out the self-assessment, and then we're going to take a look at problem number one from the practice assignment. 
So here's number one from the practice assignment. And the first thing you'll notice, this is about the points scored by Donovan Mitchell in eight recent Utah Jazz games. So here are his scores, and there are eight of them. So we automatically know that N equals eight. We're going to use that in just a second. Now, you could find the mean first just by adding those together, but I prefer to get the ugliness out of the way. We need to find the median, and that really is a pain in the butt. And we've got to get these in order um, from smallest to greatest. We have to put them in ascending order in order to be able to finish this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look through here, and we're going to find the smallest one. So the smallest one is 19, and I'm going to cross it off so I know that I used that. Now, what I like to do is I like to make sure that I'm kind of equally spacing these out. So I've got a 19, and then I've got a 23. We'll just put that right down here. We'll cross that off. Then we've got a 25 is the next one. So we'll put a 25 right there. Done with that one. Then a 26. We'll cross off the 26. Then a 28. We'll cross off the 28. Then a 33. Got one of the 33s. Then another 33. And then a 35. Now, here's why I wanted to do this first, because this is a bit of a pain. So in order to find the median, let's use that formula n plus 1 divided by 2. So we're going to do 8 plus 1 divided by 2. So this ends up being 9 divided by 2. So we end up with 4.5. So that means it's in between the fourth one and the fifth one, right in between there. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, and here's 5. So what that means is the median is right in between the two of those. Now, if you take a look here, I've got four pieces of data over here, and I've got four pieces of data over here. So you can see that would be the exact middle of that. But again, on this one, it's not a number that's actually in the data set. It's in between the two of these. So again, we just average the two of those. So we're going to add them up and divide by 2. Or you can probably just think, what would be right in the middle of 26 and 28? That would be 20. Seven. So 27 would be the median, which of course would be Q2 also. So we'll just have the two of those. And then finding the uh, quartile one and quartile three on this is pretty easy. I'm not going to do that for you, but I am going to go ahead and cross this off right here. And could you find the middle of that bottom half of the data? Could you find the one that's right in the middle of those four pieces? All right, good luck with the assignment.